Welcome to Cribs, brought to you by Grand River Raceway and the Tarmac Show. We're here at Frank Salive's house. He, of course, is the voice of Canadian harness racing. We're going to have a good chat with him, so come on inside. Hey, hey. Cal. Hey. Welcome to my crib. All right. Come on in. Okay. Now, Greg Gladiator, of course, was your name for Admirals Express. Did that uh, just pop into your head and pop out during a race call or uh, I think I had some happened. help and prompting from Dan Lois Hell at Woodbine for okay. that actually um, but again doing most of the horses uh, charismatic uh, you know storyline that yes. unfolded this uh, no pedigree Michigan bred that yes. came into Ontario Incredible. and um, Paul McDonnell would almost always come off the bike and say uh, uh, you know they just don't make them like that anymore right. he was warrior like and it was the, he was the great gladiator because he slayed the competition and it was great to be the reporter on duty for a lot of that. All right. Live racing returns to Grand River Raceway Monday, April 13th. We kick off the season with the unveiling of our Some Beach Somewhere tribute wall and the chance to win one of 50 Some Beach Somewhere photo books signed by Paul McDonnell. For more details about opening night and all the good times in store at Grand River Raceway this season, hit GrandRiverRaceway.com. Grand River Raceway. Expect an experience. Okay, uh, so we're in the kitchen. Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know what, can we look in your fridge? Yeah, do whatever uh, you want to do, yeah. In the fridge. All right, uh, you're, you're ready for this? <laughs> you're sure. Ready for this? Sure. All right. Uh, in my quick assessment, Frank, I would say that this is actually... Uh, Pretty healthy. This For a bachelor, this is incredibly healthy. You know, just like the horse people, uh, this industry really can uh, get you into some very bad eating habits if you let it, it can. right? Yeah. It can. And like I've told people, my life is just like the trainers and drivers, except I'm not pulling a horse trailer behind the car. All right, Frank, so uh, lots of people know you for your race calling career, obviously. Um, but they may not, well, they probably do know a little bit about your hockey career. Kind of take us through that quickly. Well, it was a profoundly uh, impactful and uh, important time in the formative years of my life, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, from 1972 to 75, I had the great privilege to be a goalie with the Peterborough Peets right. for the late, great, and legendary coach uh, Roger Nielsen. So um, we got to the Ontario final uh, two of, out of three of those years, and in the other year, we lost in the semifinals. But um, uh, more so than anything, there are two, uh, you know, memories of playing for the Peets. Um, Roger Nielsen instilled a very strong work ethic, which I, I've been able to carry with me throughout the rest of my life. And secondly, going to the first ever World Junior. Wow. Uh, the Peets left on Christmas Eve of 73 to go to Leningrad, Russia, wow. and play in the first ever World Junior. And how so old have you been at that point? I was 18 at the time. What? The Peets finished third in the first ever World Junior Tournament, um, but they chose a, a player, like, for their all-star team at each position right. so I was fortunate uh, to have been chosen the, the top goalie at the first ever World Junior and that's the trophy I got that was January 4th 1974 on wow. the Leningrad uh, Sports Palace ice so, that is a lot of hair Frank Salif yeah I had, yeah. The, I had the big 70s hair yeah. going you know? wow. what so, an incredible experience it really was and like yeah. you said something you really carried through with you for the yeah I had life. some marquee teammates uh, who were uh, Stan Jonathan who went on to be Don Cherry's favorite player oh, wow. and Doug Jarvis uh, went on to four straight Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens after he graduated from the Peets Bob Ganey was a teammate uh, in my first year with the Peets and of course he's gone on to be the left best left winger in hockey right. and now he's uh, even I know those names yeah. yeah, so My he's with the Montreal Canadiens still. So uh, it being a Pete's player is a good thing that happened in my life, and it's something that has stayed with me all the rest of my life. Well, the goalie stance is, um, uh, you First know, of all, so, sorry, first of mm -hmm. all, these sticks are... Yeah, these sticks, well, when we played the Russians at the first World Junior, we traded sticks after the game oh, so this at is Center Ice. Like fresh at it. Canadian Tire. This Not is, fresh uh, out of Canadian Tire. This oh, is right. uh, from the First World Junior in 1973-74. Wow. So uh, we traded sticks at Center Ice after the game. And um, you can see the Russian writing on it. And that's exactly how the sticks were in the early 70s. Um, the one you have, Kelly, is uh, from um, the Memorial Cup of 1974 at Calgary. Oh, wow. And actually, the St. Catharines Blackhawks beat us in the Ontario final that year. Yeah. But I went as their third goalie. Uh, cool. to the Memorial Cup in 1974. You put the stick down like that, and your glove hand on your knee, if you're a left-handed goalie like right. I was, I'm okay, right. then it would be like this. So put the, oh, put really? the stick in your right hand, put the stick in your right hand, and your left, 
end the term, but now you gotta, yeah, yeah and yeah, put yeah, your yeah. hand down here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, bend your knees. Hard, yeah. Bend your knees. Yeah. And there's a key phrase mm -hmm. on your toes. Well, this is where it really applies. Yeah. Two thirds of your weight is on the front balls of your feet. Really? And that's where the term being on your toes originated. The other key component of goaltending with is on, with yeah. skates on, mm -hmm. but you can push yourself across the crease faster that way. Yeah. All right. And uh, the, the, the critical mass of goaltending is never let the seat of your pants touch the ice because it takes the longest to get back up and you cover the least met area while the seat of your pants is on the ice. Right. So you see the goalies do, you know, the butterfly or to their knees or the pad stack side to side. Yeah. But don't let the seat of your pants touch the ice. Right. So, you know, this is... Motown guys. So I love YouTube um, because it's given me a second chance at all these great songs I grew up with, you right. know? So I can hear the spinners again, or the Temptations, um, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, all of the, the great, great golden era of Motown music that I grew up on the other side of the Canadian side, you know, in Leamington yeah. and Windsor. Are you a good singer? I'm not a singer. Uh, if, I, I'm afraid if I tried karaoke, you'd need 15 years of psychotherapy. So? <laughs> But I have a great do. voice, so I think a lot of people assume that uh, people with naturally fantastic voices may also carry that over. And you know what? Nobody's more surprised about that than me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, I have been able to do a lot with it, and a surprising amount, uh, having been in uh, five Hollywood movies, yeah. like uh, Lucky Number Slevin and uh, History of Violence, and having bit parts in movies like that. Thanks a lot for being with us. Live racing here Monday and Tuesday for the management and staff and the TV crew. Thanks a lot for being with us. Good night from Grand River Raceway in Elora, Ontario, Canada.